Pilot 67 inch slick flight review after maiden and a few pointers for if you're building one of these. Uh, just a quick few tips uh, and a quick few things to avoid and all the new little improvements they've made to how it assembles. And one of them, which I really like, is how the canopy fits. Normally these canopies, like on this extreme flight, are a little pull to catch, like that. Now they decided on this one they didn't like that and I think that's, at first I thought, oh, that's a bad idea because they're quite nice, them little pull catches, they, they're easy, but what they've done, they've put them here. And there's two of them, at, which at first I thought, what's, what a pain, you've got to put a hand down either side to pull them off, but you soon get used to that. You soon get used to that. The best bit is, when you put your battery in, you just do this. And then it clutch it and that's it that's it that is all you do how easy is that and to take it off it's hard to do hard to show you <laughs> i'll try but it's going to be very difficult because you need two hands so you pull that one back and you pull that one back at the same time and the problem is i can't do it i don't think one-handed. No, it's not going to let me. I'll try it. I'll try my best. No. Definitely not. So I'll just have to put the phone down. Right. So you do need two arms to take it off, but that's not a problem. And then, inside. We've got the receiver there, which is conventional, which I really like. I think that's such a best way to put the way to put the receiver on the other pallets. They put them down there, which I think is poor because then you've got to put extension leads in across here for your aerolons, which I think is ridiculous. Whereas you can just use your 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 entrance holes here for your aerolons where my finger is, and straight in to the receiver. I think it's fantastic that. And then I've just put my little satellite receiver there, which is convenient, which is brilliant. And you've got, on that receiver, you've got, just to bore you a bit here, you've got uh, uh, a milliamp sensor lead, which is under there. You can just see it. It's a spectrum milliamp sensor, which I think is invaluable with an electric plane. And then you've got a voltage read in here, which is also invaluable with electric plane, because that tells you if your batteries are aging. And you've got, obviously, the other one there is just your satellite receiver. The only downside with that, all these free plugs on these, is you can't put your tire up. You've got to put your tire up here at this end, which is not a problem. And... Then I've got these, they call them Benry straps, which are absolutely invaluable again on these because you've not got good access to get your hand in with Velcro straps. So just to give you a demonstration on how these work is you can just pull them up like that. Put you get get your lipo. This is an old puffed up lipo. Please excuse the crap. And then on this plane, which is fantastic, which I really like, the lipo. It's a 6s4000, by the way. It goes right up against the motor box, right up against it to get the right centre of gravity. And then once them are in, you can just pull these like that, like that. And you can literally do it one-handed, just one-handed, down, down, and that's it. And then the other good thing is you can just tuck them in there and your canopy will still fit.
and then you've got double straps, which I, I'm a big believer in. You've got to have two independent double straps to all these massive batteries, and I've had so many come out. And then <clears throat> that's your battery. Plugs in, plenty of room to plug it in. Plenty of room to plug it in. Uh, what else can I say? Not a lot, really. All your ESC, it's an 100 amp Dual Sky ESC underneath. Take it out, I'll try and see if I can show you. That's it, you just pull them toggle clamps. Just brilliant. Just pulls out. And then the way I've fastened it is with a little block of wood, plywood, underneath this main uh, seating area. And then that block of plywood has, you can't quite see it, a little groove in it to allow a tie wrap and this strap to all the ESC and then what I did then is screw it on with these two screws cut the velcro around the screw so it stay, keeps it level you haven't got any lumps in the velcro for the battery it's the last thing you need and then that's it really really neat really neat I love that setup and the other good thing I love about this plate, after sussing it, they use aluminium plates, which I was a bit confused why they did that. Uh, but them aluminium plates are a brilliant, brilliant idea. Because what that does, it, you can try and focus on it, it puts all the pressure from the landing gear on landing on the full thickness of that ply. Mm, which I think is brilliant way of doing it. Instead of doing it the other way, where you, you, you just snap the ply off. Now whether they've had that through problems, I don't know, but it's a really nice way of doing it. It just makes it a bit awkward to put the nuts on. You can just see the nuts down there, I think. I'll try and focus on that nut, but yeah, there you are. That one there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's your strength in there, but there's not a lot else I can say. Oh the canopy. How the canopy fits I think it's a fantastic way as well. I think they've they've come up with a really nice side. It it, it flexes there's the canopy. Which I think at first I thought, oh I don't like that. But I think it stops vibration. You can actually see it flex from the front, we'll go to the front, excuse me spinner, it's a little bit big, it's a 3 inch and it should be a 63 millimeter rather than a 75, so that's your flex, now just going to the front, oh and I love the wheel uh, pants and the shape, the teardrop shape, I mean it's brilliant, but the best thing about these is how they fit. I'll show you how they fit, I'll just turn it over. The fitting, the way they fit these is, is genius in my mind. They don't actually bolt the wheel axle through the uh, wheel pump. Like you can see there, I think that's a brilliant way of doing it because if you pan pancake your plane it's not going to rip at your bolt head through your wheel pan. Plus, because you've got a lot of axle exposed, I think that'll act as a slight spring on a really heavy landing. Not that I do many heavy landings, but if you did. Uh, and the only thing what I'd have to rip out if you did a really heavy crash is those two bolts. Now that's going to do a lot less damage than that great big nut. I think that's a crack. And the wheels are good. They're not neoprene, which I think is best idea ever because the wheel print just holds water especially on grass so they're really good. really clever idea that I love that I love the air holes in exit holes which looks like it's uh, Groucho Marx <laughs> which I think looks brilliant yeah I think that's a better better way of doing it rather than having your exit hole in your conventional place around here now the tiller wheel now this is a contentious little area which I've had to sort out because of the I'll move on to something in a minute. 
Right, I'll move on to that now. Right, after the maiden, uh, well, literally two flights after the maiden flight. Uh, I did a crankshaft. And for those who don't know what a crankshaft is, it's basically it's an end over end manoeuvre, which is really violent, extremely violent, puts a lot of pressure on motor box. And the motor box didn't take it. The motor box, the motor actually ripped out. I'll try and see if I can show you inside here. That's the motor box inside. Now that's an extension motor box in there. And it's an extension piece because Pilot allows for you to put a petrol engine in or electric motor in. But the little extension motor box is crap. It's glued together with PVA, it's weak, it's very thin wood, and it needs reinforcing desperately. So after that crankshaft and it ripped the motor out, I managed to land it dead stick, but it was an heavy landing obviously because it was dead stick, and it created an issue at the back with this. Well, this has been repaired since, but this is how I've repaired it, and I think it's actually better than what it was, in my opinion. Now, they have, they all come with this here, and that is the remains, if you can see it, of the wire, what originally went through there, but in this location, you can see where I've ground it off. And that's how it moves but it goes through a little brass ball uh, I'll show you one on this oh no I haven't got one on the extreme flight it's a different mechanism again so I thought well how am I gonna mend that and and also it did make a mess of that inch because of the pressure from the, t the, the tiller wheel pushing on this which, well, that when it was there, and, put, and pressing against the rudder and breaking that hinge. So what I've done is I haven't glued the little air bolt. I've left it slack, as you can see. It may need a tube in there, but I'm not worried. I'd rather have it like that than glued in, because when you press this wheel, the last thing you want is pressure on that rudder. You want that eyeball to it to be float to fl have a float in the hole, which is which you can see it's doing. And the other thing that is, just to go back a little bit, is I don't like grub screws in these because you can't get them out. You put Loctite in, you can't get them out. They're ruined. And anybody who can get them out are better than, than me. So I put proper bolt heads in. It's a little bit of extra extra weight, but it's well worth it. For that tiny bit of extra weight you're gonna add and this bolt there is actually in the grub screw hole of the opposite grub screw hole and it's actually acting like a grub screw against the wire against the wire of this we are flat on so what was a bad thing is actually turned into an advantage that's usually what happens when you break them uh, so I'm really happy with that and it's worked a treat. I've had 16 flights since, a little bit wobbly but I'm not worried about that because that grub screw in this small piece here, I can't move it, I can't budge it. It's, 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 it's knackered, it's just the head stripped. So I'll just have to leave it like that, I'm not bothered. I can always move this down if I wanted to but I'm not bothered. It works, it works a treat, there's no pressure on the rudder. 16 landings later, <laughs> perfect, no problem. Now the other thing is, because I like 65 degrees, I'll just show you what 65 degrees of, of elevator, I like that, I like plenty of elevator, plenty, plenty, and that's probably why my crankshaft was too violent, and probably why the motor box went, but I like that, so, and it, 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 it needs to be able to take that in my mind, because every single other 3D plane I've got has that sort of elevator floor, bevel to bevel. Right, but to get bevel to bevel, I would never have got bevel to bevel if I hadn't and cleared this. This needed clearance with a pencil 
grinder or a, a Dremel if you call it or want to call it. And then once I cleared that, you can see I can get bevel to bevel, which I'm really happy with. That's brilliant. I'm happy with that. Now, the servos, just going back to the servos, these are just some cheap servos, high powered, good specs, fast, off AliExpress. I think they were four for hundred and twenty four pound or whatever it was. So they were really good. Uh try and get GDWs, I think it is, for helicopter. Uh push rod, I've had to put an ever so slight bend in the push rod to allow to get that movement. But that it just it just clears the stabilizer. Which I'm happy about. Uh, moving on, moving on, what else can I say? Uh, I've run an 18 by, an 18 by 10 prop, wooden prop, just a cheap AliExpress again, wooden prop, balance it, no problem. It's an Irvine spinner, 15 quid I think, actually I might even leave that on because it looks fantastic in, in the uh, shiner. And then I run a dual sky, let's see if you can see, it's a beautiful motor, it's wasted on in there, really is, uh, GA2000R, it's like a race spec, 480kV, uh, equivalent to a 25cc petrol I think, but that gives, it gives plenty of power, dual sky GA2000R, 480kV motor with a Summit, Dual Sky Summit 100 amp light. Okay, only it's only light. I think it's about 90 grams ESC, and the ESC is fantastic. It's 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 not. A, you don't have to program it. You don't have to go on a computer. It's bloody amazing. It, all you have to do is for high voltage servos with switches, little tiny switches on the actual ESC. You just push them to where you want the 8 volts, 7 volts, 6 volts, whatever volts you want. Obviously, high voltage servos you want 8 volts, so they're fast. Uh, move them switches to that, and it's done. And it's done. Uh, now, the other thing I like is these. These little things. Clever little idea, but saves you time. Your wing bolt nut comes through there. And then all you do is slide it on and then just tighten your bolt up. You don't have to take your wing bolt out all the time. Those are the catches if you wanted to have a look at what them look like inside. And then the canopy, just going back to the canopy just to show you how it works. That's what the canopy looks like. That's the hook. So when you press it down, it just hooks onto there like that. And that's the other, that's from outside. A bit of carbon fiber. You can see where I've had to fettle it slightly with uh, with a sandpaper, just because it was a little bit it was a little bit tight fitting, funnily enough. But that that's not better than slack. And then it where where it went where them two tongs go in. You can just see it inside. They were just a bit they were just a bit tight laterally. So. If you watch, when you push it, you'll see it that far side. Turn focus. There you go. It just latches in. Beautiful. Really nice. One-handed. Easy. And then, the way I set the Spectrum up, if you run Spectrum DX9, uh, the way I set it up is, not all going to all this, but it's probably another video, really. Uh, I have the milliamp sensor and the voltage. Now I don't just use the voltage and I don't just use the milliamp, I use them both. Every flight, it is the only way to, to keep a, a really good eye on your batteries, on the, on the quality of batteries and whether they need replacing. So I never go below nominal volts on landing. Always keep it at nominal volts. So on these, it's 6S, 22.1. If I, if, I, if I go below 22.1, I lower the milliamp usage setting on the milliamp sensor. So it alarms out 
at uh, I'm lobbing out at the moment about three thousand milliamps on a four thousand milliamp pack, and depending on your style of flying, you you may get on a plane like this, you're probably looking at I set the I set it at four five minutes forty, and on an aggressive flight, you're probably landing at five minutes forty, and on a on a reasonable easy flight, you could get about another minute or so extra. But they are the minimum size batteries on this plane. 4,000 milliamp, you probably go a bit less than that, but I think five minute flights is low enough. Now on this plane, this extreme flight 60 inch, I use the same battery, 4,000 milliamp, and I can get nearly eight, sometimes nine minute flights on with them, depending on how aggressive you fly it. I mean, normally you, you fly them as aggressive as you can, really. Uh, but that's a lovely plane, old, but flies fabulous because it's got such a lovely, lovely access for the battery. Easy to get, it's an, an Edge 540, an old Edge 540, really easy to get battery in and out of. Two battery straps, one Velcro, one of those Benry straps. Same receiver, if you want to know what the receiver is, it's an AR63, hang on, AR637T I think. They are, they have got a gyro one, which you can program on your transmitter if you want a gyro, which, you know, which is, you know, fair enough, it's it coming handy when it's windy. And they also come in handy for a thing called heading gold, which you can program uh, a little bit of aerial on heading gold, which is always a little handy, uh, just before you do any mixing, if it's a windy day, you can't get it mixed for air lounge, you can just put a bit of heading hold on. But that's up to you if you want to use that. That's another video again. But that's about it really. I mean the the main thing to watch on these pilot slicks is or any pilot, I think these 67 inch, is that weak motor box. You can please just reinforce it. I've only reinforced it with uh, balsa pellets will it be enough uh, I mean my experience of these I've had 10 of these 60 inches I've had two 67 and nearly all of them are in bin apart from these two is you know it's it's it's, it's brutal brutal hobby when they go in when you crash them but I'm getting there I am getting there, I'm getting better. I wish the dump form is a bit longer, but never mind. I've done it this way, I've done it the expensive way. Uh, I've tried, I think a month ago, to use hook to hook instead of Velcro furry side to hook. So I, I thought it would be clever putting hook to hook so you could just release the battery easier just with a strap. The hooks stop it moving forward, didn't work battery flew forward and that was the end of that 67 inch AJ which were a bit heavy anyway but that's another story but that's the that's the uh, the pilot and I love it I've 16 flights on that now and I'm doing things on it which I didn't think I could I was able to do Raff, nearly right nearly raffle Harriers uh, raffle rolls sorry raffle rolls uh, and even going from one direction to the other which I'm real chuffed with uh, and apart from that I don't think there's anything to say I think the undercarriage is rock solid the mechan do the brilliant brilliant idea of how it's set in there you know the uh, sorry I'm just uh, Try to get some footage for you. I'd like to get that canopy off again, but never mind. Yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. But might make another video. But show you how to set the, your uh, your air on thirty eight degrees. I've just watched YouTube videos, just like everybody else will. And the best videos I've watched on these is Jace and his dad, Jace Dushier and his dad, setting them up. Fantastic. And the way they set the elevator air on at sixty eight. Sorry, 68, 38 degrees up and 37 degrees down has been invaluable for me. It's been, that's been absolutely fantastic. 
then setting them with a with a form the aerolons with a form uh you know uh level again i'm absolutely accurate allows you to put full air on throw while you do your rolling rifle rolls and it not rotating ridiculously fast it's it's fantastic fantastic i love that uh i think what else there's nothing else i really can say i think uh it looks nice in there. I got it from Aerobotics in Belgium. I live in the UK. It only took about two weeks to get here. Slightly cheaper than the UK suppliers. Not much, a few pounds. Uh, but I couldn't get one here in the UK. They haven't got them yet. And I couldn't wait. <laughs> I wanted it now. Uh, I used the Cuzza. Cuzza. 1.25 arms but well, I don't put it on the full I can get full throw without it being on the end which is better better resolution for the servo not as harsh a bit more power and a bit more torque on the, doing it that way uh, let's have a look anything else underneath I'm just trying to think if there's anything else oh and another little tip which I think is good is always leave the wing bar in and then you've got something to lift it with instead of trying to lift it with the plane with the fuselage and chance of breaking it. I think it's a really nice way of doing it, that. Uh, I'll just turn it over gently. Try not to whack it against my door. Yeah, the four bolts in these holding the undercarriage on. There's your two. One there. There's a little bit of damage actually from that maiden miss up with the motor box and another one there so they've only got three screws holding the cowl on which i think is brilliant and i love i love the the air intake the air intake oh sorry air exit all oh, fantastic looks brilliant and it flies beautiful absolutely absolutely beautiful it was an absolutely amazing flying plane really good best of all it hovers perfect it rolling area is perfect crankshafts with ridiculously uh, violent knife edge easy top pop tops easy uh i need to get some flying footage really don't i that's <laughs> the next ones right i'm I'm gonna finish it at that uh just hope i don't smash this one up because you can't fall in love with him <laughs> because he, they're not they're not here forever not the way I fly them, but if this one demises, there'll be another one. It's only wood. It's only wood and plastic. Thank God. And this little thing, this is my extreme flight. Now is a servo missing because I've had to put it in the slick. But this extreme flight 540, this is awesome. It, it, it does the knife edge. This is a plane what got me into knife edge 90 degree turns instantly with a uh, massive elevator for all, which I really like. Lovely. I'm not the best at them, but they're coming. I'm not as good as bloody a lot of them on the internet, but God loves a trier. Eh? And then this is a similar setup. It's got your little tray for your thing, which I think is the best way. Like again, this that's why they, they're doing it on the slick, I think. I mean, this is 10 year old design, but yeah, it's fantastic, fantastic design. Now, that's what I'm on about. That, that there is how that configuration, which I think is not as strong as if you did it like the uh, slick is. I think that's weaker, a lot weaker design, a lot more prone. But on this one, which I think is quite a good idea to say it's 10 year old is they've got this this the, the plywood goes right through full length which i think is good it adds a bit of strength now they don't seem to do that on